In this video, we're going to learn how psychologists separate nature from nurture and how they study the biological influences on our behavior. So first, we got to cover some biology. So let's talk about genes. You can think of genes as the instructions that tell the cells in your body how to grow and function. Genes are made up of DNA and they determine traits like eye color, hair color, how tall you are, and even certain aspects of your personality. And our genes are organized into structures called chromosomes. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so that makes a total of 46. The entire set of genes an organism has is known as its genome. It includes all the DNA found in an organism's chromosomes. All right, now with that out of the way, to understand research on genetics, you need to know what heritability is. Heritability is a measure of how much genetics contribute to the variation in a trait across a population. For instance, if a trait has high heritability, it means genetics play a significant role in shaping that trait. We can even give different traits a score for how much genetics play a role in shaping them. If a trait has a heritability score near zero, then you can assume that any difference in that trait is probably due to the environment. One example of a trait that has a heritability score of zero is the language that you speak. Nobody's born speaking Spanish. If two people are speaking a different language, it's because they grew up in different environments, not because they have different genes. So the heritability score is zero. Now let's look at a trait that is closer to one. Height is a great example for this. Height has a heritability score of 0.8, which means it's heavily influenced by genetics. But it's not entirely genetic, is it? If you don't get enough food growing up, then you won't be as tall as you could have been. For example, let's take a look at North and South Korea. These populations are genetically very similar. They're both Korean. But North Koreans are on average 13 centimeters shorter than South Koreans because their access to nutrition isn't as good. All right, so how do we know what's heritable and what's not? When researchers want to investigate the heritability of a trait, they usually look at studies done on twins. There are two different kinds of twins, monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. Monozygotic twins are more commonly known as identical twins. They have the exact same genes. So if a trait is heavily influenced by genes, then we can expect identical twins to be very similar when looking at that trait. And dizygotic twins are twins that don't have the exact same genes, which is why dizygotic twins differ more than identical twins do. All right, now let's imagine for a second that we design an experiment where we take two babies that are identical twins and have one raised by a family in New York and the other raised by a family in Texas. If these two children grow up to be similar, then that's evidence that genes play an important role in shaping personality. And we actually don't have to imagine this experiment. Adoption agencies actually did create situations situations where identical twins were separated at birth. And a researcher named Thomas Bouchard gathered these twins and collected data on a really wide variety of variables. The results were really shocking. Identical twins who grew up in different homes were just as similar as identical twins who were raised in the same house. Some of these twins grew up to do the same jobs. They even named their pets the same things. There's some pretty weird stuff in there, so you should check it out. Oh, and also, this twin research was done in Minnesota. They have a baseball team called the Minnesota Twins. I don't know, we might be living in a simulation. Okay, so we know that genes have an influence on behavior, but what influences genes? Let's do another little thought experiment. I want you to imagine that we have two mice. Mouse number one has a gene that through random chance makes it very afraid of the smell of cats. Mouse number two does not have this gene. Which of these mice is more likely to survive? Obviously mouse number one, right? If you multiply that effect by like a thousand generations, you'll eventually have an entire population of mice that are born with a fear of cats. This should sound a little bit familiar to you. What I've just explained is a really simplified version of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. In particular, we're talking about the effects of natural selection. He essentially argued that animals that are able to survive and reproduce are the ones that pass their genes on into the next generation. The genes that don't benefit survival or reproduction would eventually then die out. Darwin's theory is the backbone of everything we know in biology. And this theory is also really important in psychology because evolution has had a huge impact on our minds and how we behave. All right, that's a quick overview of genetics and heredity. And next time we're gonna look at the endocrine system.